Welcome back to the show, and everybody who participated in our bad phone call segment receives one of these lovely, handsome David Letterman late night sponges, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, you can applaud that. And uh, we have a wonderful show for you folks. A little bit later, a report on the shame of the city. And two gentlemen, each of them representing uh, the East, one the East Coast, the other the West Coast. They both work for NBC. We'll talk a little bit more about them later. <laughs> My first guest is one of the busiest... the stupidest thing I've ever been a part of. It's just plain big. Settle down or I'll clear this dump. Um, <laughs> my first guest is one of, uh, he's probably not coming out after this and I don't blame him. Uh, my first guest is one of the busiest people in Hollywood as actor, labor leader, and political activist. He's been appearing on television weekly since 1970, but right now, happens to be between jobs, please welcome Mr. Ed Asner. Sorry to subject you to that buffoonery. I had no idea that was back there. Oh, I was warned. Oh, <laughs> Doesn't bother you? Yeah, well, I've seen a lot of that stuff. <laughs> I worked with Ted Knight. Oh. <laughs> How are you? How are things? Things are uh, not dull. Not dull, no, indeed. I, I sleep uh, deeply at night, and I, uh, I uh, don't dream even anymore. I, uh, I just sleep. Mm -hmm. and when I get up, the challenges are there. They mm -hmm. just they hear you. Oh, you know, he's jumping. <laughs> so life is uh, pretty much, uh, well, you said not dull. I feel younger than ever. Yes. Let's, I to tell you what, let's get right to it here. There's a, a couple obvious things we ought to talk about. First of all, your show, of course, uh, Lou Grant is gone. Was Where? No, it was canceled, Ed. When? Uh, I read about it in a couple of weeks ago. Oh, there's another new challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, now, uh, of course, I'm, you've talked this over and over again, but what are your uh, feelings about that now? Oh, I think we got robbed. Yeah, I, I think that we had uh, good enough uh, ratings to uh, be supported by the network for another year. We had done faithful service, and that uh, the wimps outside uh, created enough uh, pressure and uh, fright and uh, uh, booga booga and uh, they took us off the air. The wimps? Yeah. Now, who, who would the wimps be? Well, you have, uh, let's see, this is New York, right? This is no uh, wimps I, in New York, Ed. Well, <laughs> there's a congressman here. He's, uh, he's kind of shaky in his seat, so they made him head of this organization. Send in your five, ten, and twenty-five dollars, and we'll get this commie Ed Asner, and uh, we'll intimidate the sponsors. Unfortunately, the show got canceled about the same day his letter went out. Mm. So I don't think he got uh, much money in on that letter. Mm -hmm. And then there was Kimberly Clark. They withdrew their advertising, and uh, people can't, can't use their Kleenex anymore on the Lou Grant show. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's another outfit in New York called the Caucus of Conservative Consumers, and they were going to boycott all of the advertisers on the Lou Grant show. And then Jerry Falwell, uh, he falls into that category. He took out ads against me. Uh, saying I was anti-Reagan and therefore must be a communist. But uh, he, I read this, after, read this afternoon where he also said that he enjoyed the program. He did, he did. I guess he wanted to watch what the enemy was doing. Uh-huh. So, uh, so uh, then generally... But he also well, asked for the five, ten, twenty-five, and thirty-five dollars. More, people were making more money off us peripherally than you can shake a stick at. So uh, the, there, were, there was pressure brought on the network and the sponsors, and you also say that people were, were somehow finding a way to make money uh, at this? Well, uh, they wanted to continue these programs of, uh, of uh, uh, pointing out who the commies were. Mm -hmm. uh, Le Boutillier, and hey, that's an all-American fellow right there. 
Now, and, have uh, people called you a communist because of this? Uh, your... Yeah, well, he called me everything but, uh, but the murderer of the four nuns in El Salvador. <laughs> it was just short of that, I yeah. think. Uh, uh, he, uh, he's written a book, and it's sold, and I guess he's, he wanted to write again. He wrote about four pages on this letter, and I should have brought it to you because it, uh, it's, uh, it's harem scarum. And uh, it, um, it's really whipping it up. Uh, all right, we'll, uh, we'll pause here. We're going to ask uh, Mr. Asner a few other questions right after this. We'll see. <laughs> Schaefer, and welcome back to the show. Uh, Ed Asner is here, and we're talking about, among other things, is uh, the cancellation of the uh, CBS series, uh, Lou Grant. Now, did anybody from the network or the production company come to you when you started taking a more politically active role in things and saying, gee, Lou, we got a hundred people employed here. We're all making pretty good dough. The network is getting a little nervous. Can you back off or at least wait till the series has its run? Uh, nobody from the network ever came to me. Uh, somebody from the... Um uh, after, two days after the death threat, uh, somebody from the uh, production uh, department uh, came to me and said, um, gee, you know, it's, uh, with you spouting off like that, the, the, the show just doesn't seem quite the same as it was before. And, uh, and I said, well, that's, I guess I said, that's too bad. Uh -huh. But that was about all. What about the, the folks, uh, if you're in television especially, you fight and you fight and you fight for a job. You get a job, you still have no guarantee that it'll last more than a weekend. You had a show uh, that was on the air, what, four years, going to its fifth? or oh, it was five. Five going to six. Uh, and so suddenly, it looks like, because of your politics now, other people are out of work. Yeah. That's the uh, guilt you have to overcome if you're going to open your mouth. And... Uh, I guess in my second or third year, I might have thought of that, or m of myself, I don't know, uh, and kept my mouth shut when I may have wanted to speak a little louder. But finally, in the fifth year, I felt that uh, I didn't want to keep my mouth shut anymore. And uh, uh, that's one of the things that uh, tends to intimidate you. The other thing is that uh, uh, I just think it's a crying shame. We were number 17 last year uh, in shows, and this year we took a five-point drop. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody got upset, seemed alarmed, seemed excited. Uh, and you would think that they would have said, hey, uh, let's pump it up, let's do a little something before the uh, wimps can claim they drove it off the mm -hmm. air. And nobody did anything. And they canceled it. And they can say that politics had nothing to do with it. But if politics had nothing to do with it, then they should be ashamed anyway for not making some kind of stand for a show that was so critically acclaimed. Yeah. Um, let me ask you another question about being in television and so forth. You, uh, again, you work all your life to attain uh, recognition as, uh, as being a talented person and success that comes with it and so on and so forth. And you were lovable as uh, Lou Grant on the, the Mary Tyler Moore Show and uh, maybe not so much lovable but revered as the, uh, the city editor on uh, uh, this program. Uh, are the average viewers still behind you, or has that begun to shift? Oh, that's bound to have affected some viewers who wanted good old uh, fuddy-duddy Uncle Lou. Uh, and he disappointed them by getting a little sharp uh, in, in private, uh, well, publicly private. And uh, I guess that's created some disaffected fans who wanted me to be good old sweet fuddy-duddy Lou. I suppose in my childhood and in my youth, I disowned actors that I had come to accept as a certain type of person, and then they switched roles on me to show they were a good actor, and I thought they stunk. Mm -hmm. And I suppose a lot of people may view me in that same light. Do you have any, uh, uh, any fears that you may never work uh, on American television again? No. No. I'll work. I may not be offered another series because of sponsor pressure, but it's still feasible and difficult to blacklist me, I would say, if I uh, was just doing TV movies. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to drum up a whole uh, 5 10 $25 campaign if you're only going to be on the air one night. Yeah. Can't get that money in that way. Yeah. So uh, uh, I'm sure I'll still be doing TV movies, uh, uh, hopefully features. 
I would want to do a series, I think, because uh, you're in touch with a certain part of America that nobody touches in any other form. Yeah, and, and again, I, it's, it sounds like we're talking about a man who barely has a couple of dimes to rub together, but you've had a, a long, enviable, oh, yeah. successful yeah. career in uh, television and acting. Uh, Fine, how much do you want? <laughs> uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to stop by here tonight, sir. And You're can... a gentleman and a scholar. And... Well, I don't know about the latter or the uh, either way. And above all, you didn't razz me. Oh, you get razzed a lot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't razz a guy you, like you. You treat me nice. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure meeting you. Here's a man who gets razzed. We'll be back with all kind of stuff. We're taking this show to Chicago. We'll be there May 2nd through May 5th. And uh, if you don't have a ticket, come anyway. No, no. If you don't have a ticket, don't come. Is that right? You have to have a ticket to get in. There are no tickets. I, and I'm not sure why I mentioned this. But we'll be in Chicago May 2nd through the 5th. I hope the weather is lovely, don't you, Paul? I think it'll be very nice there. Based on what? City. I don't know. <laughs> Just I'm based sure on your lovely. desire to play along. I yes. appreciate that. <laughs> Anything I can do, because we were off to such a great start. Uh, our first guest tonight, a talented actor who is uh, lodged in the hearts and minds of many Americans in his roles of uh, Mr. Grant and uh, also Lou Grant. He is currently on Broadway <laughs> in, in the comedy Born Yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Ed Asner. Hi, Ed. Hey, hey. Haven't seen you in quite a while. Oh, nice to have you here. Oh, no, no. How you doing? You're just spilling money everywhere. Look at no, all this dough. That's what they said I had to do to get back on the Oh, show. now stop. No. I wanted, uh, no, I no. To have it no, now. but we'll just, we'll see that you get this after the program. Uh, yeah. Uh, how you been? Yeah. Fine, they're fine, David. Uh, tell tell the folks... Which road do you take home? No, no, no. Tell us, uh, tell the folks about the play. About the play, it's yeah. wonderful. Well, you had Madeline Kahn on yeah, here. she's very nice. You always liked her better than me. No, that's not true. Ed. I think you did. You guys get you... along all right in the play? Oh, wonderfully, yeah. wonderfully. I, uh, I slap her around every night. She keeps coming back for more every mm -hmm. other performance. Hey, uh, are you enjoying this? Now, you do a show every night. Uh, no, Monday well, you're dark, right? It's hard, but because we don't get a lot of celebrities. Like, like you haven't been there yet. No, and, well, I'm and, coming. It's on my list of things to do. When, when do you think you'll be there? Well, you know, now that we, we decided to start rehearsing, so my schedule is going to be completely... <laughs> you mean you're going to have to learn lines? <laughs> yeah, completely oh. jammed up. You know, they can plant electrodes <laughs> yeah. in you. Well, that's what we are hoping. Uh, that happened. I heard once, I mean, the technique you did about the, uh, uh -huh. the, uh, the thing here. Right. I heard that, that uh, I don't know if it's true, but there's a story that when Brando was doing the formula with George C. Scott, that he used a hearing aid. And somebody would feed him the lines that way? Yeah. yeah. And uh, his first speech, and he took a hearing aid out and said, <laughs> damn thing doesn't work. <laughs> So anyway, now back to the play. Yes. Now, uh, are you enjoying this? Is this going to well, be a long run? it is happily run? for her and uh -huh. sadly for me. Uh, how so? Well, she goes off with this creep, uh -huh. and uh, and I'm left alone with my millions. Yeah. Uh, and w will this continue now for another uh, another couple of years? Well, no, no, no. It's a limited run. Uh, I only have so much juice in me, and. Mm -hmm. Thank New York, God. New York is a summer. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> New York is a summer festival, yeah. which I don't know if I want to. Have go you to. done a lot of theater? Oh yeah, yeah. I started out in theater. Yeah. It's the only way to begin, David. You get to learn lines that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's uh, tell me about you. Uh, you know, we're going to Chicago. That's my Wild Oats town. Yeah, That's I, where I first began learning lines. Are you from the Midwest originally? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm from Kansas City, yeah. went to the University of Chicago, dropped out because I began acting extracurricularly there, and I love it. It's, yeah. uh, it, it's, a, it's a real American city. What kind of things did you do there to support yourself in Chicago? <clears throat> well, I, uh, I had worked in, a, uh, in a, um, an auto plant in Kansas City, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do that anymore. Right. That, to me, was, I was chained to the, to the line. I didn't want what to. What kind of cars were they making then? 
Uh, we were making Buicks, Oldsmobiles, and Pontiacs. Yeah. And uh, I tried to quit the first day in that Kansas City job. I couldn't find the foreman. Uh, so I said, well, I'm, it's hard on the other guys. I'll go back to work. Right. Because earlier, I had jumped off the line to get a drink. He said, where are you going? I said, get a wa water. Uh -huh. He said, well, you can't get water until you get out of the hole. So I, I kept pushing the other guys in the hole, and it was, it was, it was savage. So if he, if he was that nasty, think how mad he would have been if you had quit. I know, yeah. I know. And I didn't want to face No, he that. didn't want to go through that. Somehow I got to lunch, uh -huh. and lunch restored <laughs> me, revivified me, and I kept on. But I was never good on that particular line. You see, it wasn't a union shop. It was a tough open shop uh -huh. plant, and I'm a union man. And, uh, and then, you spent, then you went to Chicago and spent some time there as a cab driver, is that true? Oh, I did a cab driver stint. Uh, the amazing thing was that I'm still alive, mm -hmm. and uh, as are my passengers. Really? You were reckless. Uh, I really wasn't a good driver then. Yeah. I'm, I'm a crackerjack now. I'm a <laughs> Gran Turismo type now. But then, uh, then I was still learning. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't, I just did, I'd rather pull into, uh, you know, cab, uh, cab stops and read plays. So I wasn't a hustler, yeah, like, a, yeah. like a New York cab driver. Now, when you say you sow, sowed your wild oats in Chicago, wh what exactly are we talking about? Well, this is a phrase, David. It goes oh, back... I know the uh, phrase, but perhaps, I mean... <clears throat> perhaps before your time. No, I, I know the phrase, point. but what does it mean actually, in your it case? It means that, that you discover the, the world, the world of uh, women, wine, and song, uh -huh. uh, uh, the, the world of uh, living in a $4 room, looking out over an air shaft, collects <laughs> rainwater, and wondering where will this all end. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. Yeah, it's interesting. Showing you well. But isn't it interesting to think back on, on things like a $4 room and now take a look at what your life has brought you or what you've yes. brought for yourself? Yeah. It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? I'm, I'm at the Salvation Army tonight. No, uh, no, no, you're not. Uh, well, uh, we uh, need to do I'm a... I'm a lucky man. We'll, well, we're all lucky, don't you think? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll do a commercial here and continue with uh, Ed Asner. Come on back. Uh, what theater do we find ourselves in? 46th Street. A big, big house? That's uh, about 1,600 seats. 1,600 and, and an old place? Well, it's a lot of uh, fantastic. It's got a, a tremendous record of great musicals there. It's primarily a musical house. When did they put it up, do you know? Uh, the 20... 7, 29, yeah. something like that. Yeah. There used to be, uh, in New York City in one point, like 80 legitimate uh, Broadway uh -huh. theater houses. Oh, look at, look at the Maybe even more. Maybe I've got that wrong. They, they took one of, the, one of their lead houses, and uh, for a million a year, they're using it as a church. Right. right. I bought one of them. I'm living there. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, you, tell me about, uh, uh, you worked with John Wayne? Yeah. What, yeah. what was the uh, film? Film? That was El Dorado, yeah. 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 It was a very big break that Howard Hawks gave me, and uh, I was very nervous, and... Uh, uh, the, the first day of work was the, was the most... For instance, I was going to, to Phoenix, to uh, Tucson, to, to make the film, and not until I got to Paramount, uh, and I told the guys I was just going down there for uh, maybe a week, and then I was coming back when they came back to... They said, no, no, no. <laughs> when you're on a Hawks film, you go down there you're and there. you stay. You move in, you sure. Stay, yeah, you bring your furniture. <laughs> uh, so, I, I didn't know. I was a young punk, and... Uh, a uh, younger punk than I am yeah, now. Yeah. And, uh, was this uh, your first big role, first big film? Yeah, it was, it was close. I had done Slender Thread. I did a small part in Slender Thread with Sidney uh, Pollock directed. Uh -huh. That was a pretty big film for me. And this was the next one. So I got down there, and uh, 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 because my wife and twins were coming to visit me, I was right between John Wayne on one side and Howard Hawks on the other. And uh, it was tough. Yeah, it, it, right. it was tough between the two biggies. But the first day of work, uh, we're talking over the scene, Hawks and, and Duke and me. <laughs> and I made a few suggestions about changing it, and Hawks loved that. <laughs> and uh, uh, then he said, okay, Ed, you can get lost. I was wearing a, an outfit like uh, a Marrying Sam. I looked like Marrying Sam, yeah. a little Abner. Mm -hmm. I was Bart Jason was my name. I was the mm -hmm. foreman, the, the ranch uh, owner. 
So he said, you can get lost, be a while before they set up. So I took a, started taking a walk, I'm nervous as hell. And uh, then I see Duke on his Appaloosa. I mean, he's busy jockeying it around. And this army of technicians is bringing the equipment up to the, to the front of the ranch house. And, and he's looking, and I say, oh, hell, I mean, hey, they're getting ready to shoot, and they can't shoot without me. I mean, it's my scene. So sure. I start walking towards the ranch house, and I hear Duke saying, he's looking right at me, he's saying, where's that New York actor? Where's that New York? He's backing his Appaloosa up like this, you know. And, and That's I'm, a horse, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a Pontiac. Euphemism. I didn't it's know what euphemism. it was exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I said, you mean me? And I said, ah. Oh. So uh, we start the scene, and uh, I come out, and w what it is, I've given him money to kill uh, Mitchum. Turns out he doesn't know who it is, and he finds out Mitchum is one of his oldest best friends. So he's back there to throw back the 30 pieces of silver that I've given him. And uh, during rehearsal, I missed it once. So I go behind the flat, and he says, yeah, and yeah you better... Um, you better get him uh, a catcher's mitt. He's having trouble with that money. <laughs> so the next time I go out and rehearsal again, I throw the piece, uh, the, the money to him, and it just is out of his reach. I mean, it just, I mean, perfect time. Just enough to make him look like a fumbler. <laughs> so so he, and, and he, then he throws it to me, and without looking, I, I snag it like that. Yeah. I just look like So I go, hey, hey, he says, I've seen the Dodgers could use you. Yeah, yeah. So we do the scene, and uh, Hawks liked me, and uh, uh, Duke tested me, and I passed the test, yeah. and that's it. That's, that's the end of the story. Well, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's all right. We can go on. No, no. That. It's a good we, story. We can go on about what Hawks no, did no, no, when no. I had the card game no. going next to his room. But... The ending needs a little work, Ed, but the story itself is there. I'm telling you, essentially, it's a, it's a great story. Does it match the Greeks? <laughs> no. 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 Uh, but I would think that you, you and uh, John Marlo. Wayne would get along pretty well. You seem like guys of the same... Well, after of... that, we did. Yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Uh, so if you're, if you're in town, although this thing is probably sold out, isn't it? Born yesterday? Should be, but it's not quite. Okay, so it'll, it'll be running for a while. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's, the, here's the rest of the money. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Uh, right. I, I, I borrowed it from the crew. That's and, darn nice uh, of you. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Um, uh, we'll get your cookies later. Yeah. Uh, we have to pause again. We'll be back here after a station at end of the Thanks, Ed. Letter number two. Dear Dave, uh, could you at least host the show one night wearing a suit covered with little Xerox copies of Ed Asner's head? <laughs> Your pal, Captain Dave Renneker, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, let's see. Uh, he wants some uh, copies, uh, Xerox copies of Ed Asner's head. Uh, well, you know, darn it, I'll, I'll give it a try. It's me, Dave. Listen, I, I can't explain it to you right now, but I, but I need to have 200 Xerox copies of your head, if you could do that. Don't go away. Okay. Uh, right here. I, you sure I didn't wake you? No, no, you didn't wake me. Do I? Do I? Don't I sound awake? Yeah, no, sure. Top of the morning. Yeah. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's I don't know this for sure, but I have a feeling because of that letter, we're going to win a Peabody. <laughs> uh, last week, did you know that last week was Celebrity Jeopardy Week on Jeopardy? The Alex Trebek, very popular. <clears throat> we uh, did some research, and we have for you now, compiled on videotape, Ed Asner was one of the contestants. We have now all of Ed Asner's incorrect answers. <laughs>
Celebrity Jeopardy. Hal, roll the videotape. Ed Asner on Celebrity Jeopardy. Watch this. Ed, uh, what is uh, 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 Gene Autry? Nope, sorry. Who is Barbara Streisand? Nope, sorry. What is cream cheese? Sorry, that is wrong. What is a pig? That is wrong. Chinese salad? No. What is the Badlands? Sorry, that is wrong. What is the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Caribbean? Oh, sorry, incorrect. Uh, Chinese salad? No. I think my uh, buzzer is not working. <laughs> Celebrity Jeopardy! But you know, if, if you're going to kiss a bowler, better be a Hall of Famer. Uh, by the way, uh, Ed Asner was the big winner. He was the big celebrity champion on celebrity, uh, celebrity Bowling last week, whatever it was. You know, the head of the FDA actually called up Frito-Lay and screamed, What were you thinking after reviewing Frito-Lay permanently damp chips? Yes, hey, yes, Biff. Me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of our stage managers, Biff Henderson. Yes, Biff, what can I do for you? We're right in the middle of a big show here, Biff. I'm just wondering, Dave. Yeah. Are you done with those chips? With the Fritos here, the permanently damp Fritos? All right, are you uh, done with those things? Yeah, sure, help yourself. Come and get them, please. What the hell is going on here? Hi, Ed, how are you? Enjoy those. Thank you very much. Odd. Edward Asner. No, what was he doing? I don't know. Isn't that odd? In a tux. He wanted the, yeah, he wanted the damp chips. Came all this yeah. way. On the show tonight, Steve Young, Adam Sandler, Hootie, and the Blowfish. Now, I'm told... Uh, that when uh, Edward Asner came out here, that there was somebody like an intruder, some kind of a uh, sniper or a stalker, uh, appeared briefly behind me. Hal, roll the videotape and let's see if we can find what we're talking about. This is a TV blooper. There we are. Oh, look at that, right behind me. Who's there that? she goes. Who's that? I don't know, but you see? Uh, uh -oh. You see, she was not supposed to be on camera. Oh. Did you, and did you see how when she realized that she was right in the middle of the show, how embarrassed she was? She we was. thought she'd get a kick uh, out of looking right. at that, and, and we were wrong.